This is the Hariba LA910 setup. We have in front of here a computer with a monitor and printer. We also have a Hariba LA910 laser scattering purple size analyzer. To start the LA910, simply flip the switch here and then in this field right here, press Control Alt Delete. The username is IA Car Lab and the password is IA Particle. When the software is loaded, you should see two icons. One on the bottom says Measure, and then one on the top here says LA910 from Windows. You want to click on the one that says LA910 for Windows. Within a few seconds, this screen should show up. This is the software which controls the Hariba LA910. Today we're going to show how to load a particular condition file, verify that the parameters are correct, input information on the sample name and ID, set the test up, do the test, and then get the results printed into a printer. To load a condition file, what I want to do is move the cursor under File. I want to go under what is called Open Conditions, and I want to look for the file of interest. Today we'd like to do some analysis on some sodium chloride. So I'm going to click on sodium chloride. I'm going to click on Open down here. This condition file should now open. Under the Conditions tab, I want to verify that the display conditions are the same. And that the fixed values, these will appear in the report, are also the same or what I want. After I click OK, I'm then going to go to Sample Information and enter some information on this sample. The sample that I'm going to test today is some product. So I'm just going to type the sample name as product. If you have a work order number to track jobs, I would put this in the lot number field. This would make it a lot easier to track the work on the LA910. When the instrument first arrives down in Fredericksburg, the sample cell will be removed. The sample cell is located right here. Simply you want to loosen these screws, put the sample cell in here, and retighten. Now, to start a run, the first thing we want to do is clean out the analyzer. And to do that, we need circulation mask right here. And what I want to do is I want to open this bottle up. I got a bottle of IPA. I got a reservoir dedicated for IPA. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour IPA into this cell here. And then what I'm going to do is on the computer, I'm going to go to the measurement button, and I'm going to select drain. The only way to get liquid out of the circulation bath is through drain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select drain right here, and this machine can then drain the liquid through the machine. Now you may want to pour liquid through this for a couple of seconds if you've already done the run. To fill the circulation bath is the next step that needs to be done. And simply this is accomplished through pouring liquid into the circulation bath. As I'm about to do right now. You want to fill this up to about a three quarter mark. Something like that. And the next thing you want to do is on the computer, you want to start what is called the circulation. That's this button right here. You're going to hear the motor actually, and hopefully what should happen is that this baseline should come to flat. It looks like it is, or it looks pretty good right now. So the first step I want to do next is take my blink. And to take a blank, I want to hit the blank button. But before I take my blank, the first thing I want to do is make sure that the instrument is aligned. These are the alignment bars here. 
Looks like we got four lights on. This is terrific. But if one of them need to be adjusted, you need to adjust these micrometers here until the lights come on. Now I've created a sample, and I got the sample right here. But what I have done to the sample is I have predispersed it. Meaning that I put a certain amount of sample into the solvent, in this piece IPA, and shaken it up. The sample should look like this. Now what I'm going to do is start agitation of the sample. So I'm going to put on the instrument here, there's, this is the ultrasonic, and this is the agitation. I'm going to use a low agitation, so I'm going to start it maybe at about a 2. I'm going to go into conditions here, I'm going to call it a sample name, called product. Once I start my agitation, I may have to take a second blank here, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And when this blank gets done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the predispersed sample into the circulation bath. To do that, I usually use a transfer pipette, like this, and then what I do is I will put the sample into the circulation bath. So I'm going to put this into the circulation bath right now, just squirt it in there. You want to make sure that it's well mixed, and then you want to make sure that the counts here are fairly low. We see that the red and the, the blue bars are below the 95% level. I'd like to get a little bit more sample in here, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce it into the circulation valve, and this percentages should drop a little bit more. I think I got a fairly stable background right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click measure. It's going to give you the name of the material and everything, just verify everything's correct. Select OK, and this instrument should measure. We have our result here on the screen. We want to do this measurement a couple of times, so I'm going to move this cursor over to measure, and then to the measurement bar right over here again. Now with a sample like this, which has a fairly broad distribution, you may need to do a couple of measurements. These two results are fairly consistent. This is what should be expected with a sample of this kind, which has a fairly broad distribution. I like what I see, so now I'm going to stop the measurement. I'm going to press the cursor, bring the cursor over to the stop button. This is going to be stop. I'm going to move the cursor over to measure, and then I'm going to drain the liquid out. Now, when I drain the liquid into the circul from the circulation bath, I want to be pouring some fresh liquid into this cup as it is going just to help further flush it out. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's going to start circulating. I'm going to grab a little IPA. Just a couple of seconds. You don't need to pour the whole thing, but just a little bit to get it to mix through. To save the results, what you need to do is move the cursor to the display field, and then you want to right click in this field. Now all of these data points have been stored in a memory slot. So you want to move the cursor over to what is called memory operations, and then you want to select the data point that you want. So here is memory one, and I'm just going to go right here, and I'm going to go to save, and I'll save it according to the file number. Now here at Avika and Woodbury, we generally save things by the MO number followed by a three digit code. I do not know how things are saved down at Avika Manufacturing. You may want to have a WO number that indicates a work order number, then a other code as well. To print the data, you want to move the file of interest from the memory one slot to the main result. Data gets printed from the main result slot. You want to hit return button to get out of this field. Then what you want to do is go under file 
and you want to print and generally we want the single the summary report and you hit print and this should print out if you have a network connection you might be able to also save this to the network or print this to a PDF file that you can subsequently put onto a disk. This describes the operation of the Hariba LA910.